watch this. What, this? It's a new audio program. Hang on, I have to hold this like this? Yeah. You didn't get me a mic wait, stand? Wait, wait, wait. What's the point of that? It's called an audio clap. And Why so can't we have a stand? We do have stand. I just said earlier that I would prefer to keep you without the stand today because I feel like you holding the microphone will keep you ocup occupied enough so that you don't start focusing on pitching <laughs> something else. Um, we learned last podcast, it's got to be like you got to make out with it, basically. Like if I had a cup to put this in, mm -hmm. it would be easier. Yeah, well, we have a stand, but... Give me a sec. What are you doing? <laughs> it's not, not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, is this okay? <laughs> yeah, I hope you're not breaking the cord, but whatever. It's your, you paid for it. So what's up? So for those of you who are listening, Reza stuck the microphone through a paper towel holder, and it's sticking up the other side. It just looks really weird. It's very creative. Okay. Um. So yeah, just make sure you talk right into the microphone. That I'm talking. Okay. <laughs> I sense. think someone said um, it needs to be louder. I think that's just because we weren't talking right into the microphone. So, like, a lot of times, PT would, like, go like this and, like, talk away from the microphone versus, like, talking right into so the microphone. So, if I want to talk smack, I just kind of hold it like this. You can, st <laughs> you can still hear it, but it's just, uh, it's not as quite as clean and crisp and sexy, you know? You use the S word. Sexy. You're not supposed to say that? No. I remember I kept saying I'm going to try and swear less on the podcast in pretty much every episode. I think I've sworn at least once. Do you swear a lot? I try not to. Why? Because I spend a lot of time with kids and adolescents, and I'm about to have my own kid. And you're about to be on the CrossFit Kids seminar staff. Congrats. Thanks. You got your red shirts this week? Yeah, I got them yesterday. Did you get really excited? Uh, right into yeah. the mic, please. What? Right into the mic, please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, I told you it's easier to hold it. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty exciting. Yeah. Have you on this for a while? Uh, yeah. Why? Because um, the other two are on seminar and you're the only one that wasn't? No, no. <laughs> I sure? just, ever since I did my kid seminar like five years ago, I was like, I was like, it would be cool to be one of these people. Why? Why not on the L1 staff? L1 staff seems like the one that everyone wants. What made you want the specialty one? I don't like adults, man. I huh. like kids. Fair enough. And I want to, I'd rather teach people how to work with kids. Mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. I, I, they, those boys travel a lot. What, the kids' ones? No, the L1s. Oh, yeah, like often, you mean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I uh, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't, like, I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe Growing one day I'll, I'll hop on L1, like, if I. How does that work? Are you able to literally just, like. No, I would have to, like. Intern on it. Yeah, exactly. Same process. Would it yep. be easier because you're already on staff? Because technically, kid yeah. staff is the same as L1 staff now, right? Like, in terms of, like, you're actually a staff member of CrossFit. It's not a specialty course Yeah, yeah, you're, you're hired by CrossFit. I think it would be a little bit easier in a sense that, like... They know you're not a complete jabroni. Yeah, it's, like, internal, you yeah. know? Like, it's not like you're applying for a job within the same company as opposed mm -hmm. to, like, a, a, applying for a job as an outsider. Yeah, right, right. Would you ever, like, what What would be... It would just Is this the travel that turns you off the level one? Um, yeah. Because what's, y are you going to travel a lot less with kids? Like, how does that work? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think that's. Just yeah, like there's, less. There's way fewer kid seminars than there are level one seminars. So just less volume overall. Yeah. And like, you know, I'm starting a family and my wife works full time. So as of right now, so like mm -hmm. the only time I really get to spend with her is on the weekends. Right. Right. So it'd be kind of poopy if you were gone every single weekend yeah we'd never see each other yeah exactly are you gonna have more than one kid that's the plan really i'd like to yeah you start with a clan how many do you want um i don't know like at least two yeah yeah you gotta keep i feel like as soon as you get the numbers over even it gets really hard you know what i mean i like think as it soon probably as gets really hard with just one <laughs> well yeah i mean compared to none but like a yeah. lot of people who have one like i can't imagine having more yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think we would maybe we'd wait a little while, though, between. Yeah. Like, how long? Well, Lexi's pretty young, so you got that on your side. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, like, three-year gap. Yeah. That's like me and my sister. That's pretty normal, I think. Um, how was Vlogtoberfest? It was really fun. Yeah. 
Yeah. Good uh, good Instagram stories. You like that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was really, really cool um, competing with Dan. Uh, oh, yeah, talk about that. That's kind of cool. Who's Dan? Yeah, so Dan started. He was like our first kids pro kids, fr- first kid that pretty much walked into NCR and said he wanted to CrossFit. He's about 12 years old when he did that. And um, I've just kind of been his coach ever since, uh, along with other coaches at the gym like Brett and Julia and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But uh, it was really cool Julia to... Julia started as a teen? Julia, I used to get Julia to do the class with Dan because she was 17. Oh, really? So that Dan didn't have to do it alone. <coughs> and right. it was appropriate because she was 17 and he was 12. So it wasn't like an adult was doing it with the kid. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, Which is pretty cool because they've always pushed each other. Mm-hmm. Even even up till today, like they'll push each other in wads. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, it was cool to uh, compete with Dan. It was... Like he was, he was just such a gentleman, and like really, just yeah, like how so? You know, there was like grown men at this competition, like freaking out on the judges. I saw one guy throw a forty-five pound plate like ten feet onto the sand because I don't know why he was doing that. Roy he was rage. kind of acting irrationally, <laughs> and like Dan got a really silly no rep, and he just kind of looked at the judge and said, "Okay, no problem, man." Like yeah, you know, I mean, twenty bucks that like that guy maybe didn't play sports, and Dan's. A high-level hockey player, so he's used to dealing with referees and bad calls and learning That's how to. That's one way of looking at it. The other way it. of looking at it is, Dan's a competitive hockey player, and mm-hmm. they don't tolerate like most hockey players don't put up with a lot of bullshit. And it's true. I was just very happy with. How'd you guys not, do? Not just we came second. Nice. Yeah, we're just happy with the way he like carried himself that day. Mm-hmm. Not only as an athlete, but like as a you know, it's it's like it was a proud coaching moment. Mm-hmm. You know, like. He's just, he's a cool kid. He's, he means he, he's a good kid. You know, he's got a good head on his shoulders. Why'd you do it with him? Uh, <laughs> because Pete bailed on me. <laughs> <laughs> so you were supposed to do it with Pete originally? Yeah. And I'm actually really glad I didn't do it with Pete. Cause like. It would have. Why? Cause we would have like dominated. Oh really? Yeah. Mm. I, I mean that in like the least arrogant way possible. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And I, I don't think that's fun for everyone else. Yeah. Because then it would be like too regional. Yeah, I mean the only r- the reason why I wanted to do Oktoberfest this year was for Motion Ball. Because mm-hmm. because uh, that's your thing. Yeah, I'm the event director, and they were raising money for Motion Ball, so that's mm-hmm. like you know that's why I wanted to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There was a bunch of other athletes in the gym that did it, eh? Yeah, a bunch. Who? Um, Lindsay and Genevieve, Kim and um, Mia. Mia. Uh, Don, who's new to the gym, did mm-hmm. it with uh, a girl from Fortis, and her husband Justin did it with a guy from Fortis. Uh, Heather and Lauren also did it. Um, oh, Lisa and Jose did it. Uh, I think I'm getting everyone. I think that was it. Why was Lisa standing on the podium with not Jose? Because Jose hurt herself. Really? Yeah. So someone had to step in. Yeah. Who stepped in? Uh, Relitza from CrossFit Vallejo. Was she already Vallejo? on the team with someone? No, she was just there hanging out. I think spectating. Her. No way. And yeah, she just I, like decided I, to throw down. Yeah. Well, like Lisa came up to me and was like, "Jose hurt herself," and I was like, "Well, do you still want to compete?" And she was like, "Yeah, I'd like to." So I was like, "Okay, let's go for a walk." Mm-hmm. And I saw Relitza. Relitza's done our comp here a couple of times. Yeah. I think she's won it once, and I I know she's a, a phenomenal athlete herself. Right. So I I thought, you know, let's let's see if they'll let us. You know, I asked her for, we asked Relitza first, and then mm-hmm. we asked the organizers, and they said it was cool, so mm-hmm. they did it. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Sounds like fun. Yeah. Do you think these competitions, these local competitions, are going to get more popular now that sanctioned competitions are becoming a thing, and now that there's, like, it's not just the open regionals and the games, now it's, like, the lines may be blurred between, like, what's a legitimate competition and what isn't? To be honest with you, I, I think these Local competitions have always been really popular. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I don't think they can. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Maybe I just I'm maybe I'm thinking because like the regular high level CrossFit Games athlete is going to be turning into. I talked about this in the last podcast, but because you know there's all these sanctioned events, they're going to be turning into more of a traditional athlete that we see in like the NFL, the NBA, where they're playing lots of games throughout the ye- le- year. And so maybe it might become normal for a CrossFit athlete, even recreationally, to do more of these local competitions. Do you think that'll trickle down or no? I think I think the local competitions always like attract a, a very particular demographic of athletes. Mm-hmm. What is that demographic? Like 
mediocre at best. Yeah. So like maybe once were. And and I'm thing. totally throwing myself under the bus yeah. by saying that. Like I did no nothing against the people that do these competitions, but mm-hmm. like I think those bigger, higher end athletes, the ones who typically qualify for regionals and whatnot, mm-hmm. are gonna save themselves for those sanctioned competitions. Right. And these local competitions will kinda be like be exactly what they are, local fun competitions. Yeah. Right. Interesting. Do you think you might see, though, like people trying to take them even more seriously than they already are because they're like... I, I hope not. I hope not yeah. because they're not... That's not I really think the they're purpose. there for a purpose. They're not They're not sanctioned events. Yeah. And actually, actually, the guys at Fortis, uh, like when they opened up the comp that day, they they mentioned like this is not a sanctioned event. Like yeah, just like have fun. Chill. Like, chill out. Like. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Do you have a message for people who throw 45-pound plates at local competitions? Like, is that... Do you like... Because, like, what it... I don't know. You know, like, playing kids dodgeball. Dude, if that, happened, I almost if that happened at our competition... Oh, you've never seen us throw our, run our competition. Okay. Uh, Describe we, it. We'd probably kick the guy out of the Yeah. Gym. Yeah. And, like, but where's the level drawn between, like, just being a competitive person and then knowing how to check it? Because, like, don't you want that a little bit? It makes it a little bit more fun, right? The competition? Like, not yeah, throwing but I mean, a plate, but, you like... You be an absolute gem like Dan Goulet and just take it how it is Mm -hmm. like whatever man Mm -hmm. like it's like the judge isn't getting paid like Mm -hmm. that guy that guy's volunteering yeah himself you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. there's no i see no value in like you could be as competitive as you want at the end of the day you're either good or you're not yeah exactly yeah judge isn't going to change that yeah what do you think about the new announcements with all the um sanction stuff like teens and masters you're probably pretty stoked about that because you have masters like yeah as a you know, my goal for the last couple of years been has been to qualify as a 35 year old masters and athlete, and I think my odds just got better if if what they say is true and they will take the fittest man in the country. I think my odds of being the fittest Canadian are higher than me being one of the top 20 fittest guys in the world. Are they? Is it? I haven't read any of the new stuff, but I know they've released some stuff about the masters and teens. Is it? just the fittest in the country or are they doing the top 20 in the open or are they, do you know what it is like Howard? i have no clue okay interesting teams though teams is pretty cool the like legitimate super teams T- to be honest with you as of last week i heard there's no masters no teens anymore mm-hmm. and then greg glassman did his podcast and yeah said he wants to keep them yeah so i maybe what i'm what i just stated are speculations but mm-hmm. if if the speculations are correct that would be better for me. Right. What I think about the super teams, um, I don't know. As a you know, as a potential team athlete, like it's kind of shitty. I, yeah. I, I don't know. It's not though. It's not. It's it's cool. Like the, you're, the quality of teams you're going to see at the CrossFit Games is going to be insane. Way better. Yeah. yeah. Insane. Well, I mean, and just just to clarify for the people who don't know what we're talking about. Uh, you no longer have to train at the same affiliate to be a part of a team. You can train like you could be in Europe and I could be in North America and we yep. could be on the same team. Yeah. Yeah. How do you think that would play though for like the team style? Cause we've seen a lot of teams that are supposed to do really well, but the teamwork just isn't there. You know what I mean? Like you see it at the invitational time and time and again, where it's like, I, I'm not discounting teamwork and chemistry. I think it's very important. Do you think we'll still see a lot of like, so for mayhem, like, a lot of athletes travel far to train there and live there all year. Do you think we'll still, even though you don't have to do that anymore, do you think we'll still see teams doing that just to purely to get that teamwork and chemistry component? Maybe, maybe, but if they don't have to, why bother? Well, I mean, to, so they can win. Yeah, but like individual talent is, is, I think, more important than team chemistry. But really, because I think most of the invitationals, Europe has had the fittest athletes overall across all four, and they've always done pretty poorly. You know, and I, I, I'm using Europe as an example because that's the one that sticks in my mind, but they've had good years, bad years. But I think there's been lots of times at the Invitational where the individual athletes were obviously very well and the team did very bad. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, like, yeah. it's hard to tell, right? Like, Rich mm-hmm. Froning always competes on that team. Like, yeah, it's true. Like someone always gets hurt and Rich jumps in. He's, <laughs> yeah. a, he's a team athlete, so he's like. Are they can't? Did they nix? They nix the invitational. Eh? That's no more. I guess so. Yeah. I think so. That kind of sucks. That was a pretty cool comp. Although I didn't watch it last year, to be completely honest. Yeah, they're fun to watch. I like they're how they're okay. fast. Like they're an hour long and it's yeah. Done. yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of like. I feel like that'd be so hard as an athlete. Do you remember hearing Velner talk about? I think it was last year. He like 
because they drug they drug tested the athletes right before um and i forget exactly how it happened but he didn't have enough water like he hadn't drank enough water so he couldn't pee so they made him stay back there and they made him drink a bunch of water and i think like eat a bunch of things that were supposed to help him pee like eat a bunch of nuts or something so that the pee didn't get diluted by the water but it was enough so that he peed and anyway he went on the competition floor he's like borderline throwing up the whole time that sucks yeah i feel like that i feel like sucks to be pat valner i feel like those that two hours of intensive would not be flying from country to country crossfitting and i know he's just in the swiss alps that's so sick dude he didn't give a shit that he had to eat a couple nuts and then compete if i could go to any competition worldwide it would be that swiss one just by the pictures he posted on instagram that was gorgeous have you ever traveled anywhere like that i went to wadapalooza once qualified what like oh i was just talking travel in general not even like crossfit oh yeah i've I've been to some nice places where <laughs> like everywhere i've been yeah uh well i've been out to thailand why i did all europe okay why just like for fun <laughs> uh i did europe after university i backpacked through europe for two months mm-hmm. uh, my dad used to live in dubai mm-hmm. i went to thailand with my dad i've been to mexico for spring break Mm-hmm. More than once. Uh, is spring break a thing in Canada? I've never had like a real yeah, spring reading break. Week. Okay, I guess it's so. a thing. <laughs> but like, I mean, it's not a thing like it is in the states. Kinda. Really? Yeah. Where'd you go to school? You gotta you gotta go to the right places, my yeah. friend. Yeah. Where'd you go to school? Carleton. Oh, okay, that yeah, was pretty far from that. Um, where else have I been? Mexico, like Western, the like California and Las mm-hmm. Vegas, and you know. Boston and you know the states. Yeah. Would you say you travel a lot? That's a lot of places. I think more than the average person, maybe. Did that happen in a short period of time? No, over time. Okay. When yeah. did you start traveling? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. Do you think that's going to be a deterrent for the athletes at Absolutely. these sanctioned competitions now? Hundred percent. Do you think though that now because of the higher level of exposure, there's going to be more opportunity to get like, doesn't Dubai. Sponsors. Yeah. Sponsors number one, but doesn't Dubai pay for all the athletes to come out or is it just the ones they invite? I don't know. I have no clue. Uh, yeah. Like I'm not going to travel far. Yeah. If you had Unless to, someone's paying for it. If you had to travel, if you want to contact me, uh, <laughs> Reza at CrossFit NCR at Vlog Rez on Instagram. You need to change that handle again. Never change it <laughs> at Vlog Rez. You need a separate personality. Um, do you think though, like, okay, are there going to be more competitions in the U.S. than there are worldwide? Probably because that's think? where the sport or originated. But isn't the whole point of the sanction thing to like get more people involved? So don't you think they'd try to spread them out if they could? They should. Um, do they care? No. Yeah. Well, we were just talking about this earlier. Like, it's like, not there. Mm-hmm. Like, who gives a shit who travels to where to qualify for what? Mm-hmm. You have the money to travel. Travel. If you don't, you're screwed. You, you're mm-hmm. confined to what's within your reach, right? Yeah, you got to come top 20 in the open or win your country. Whatever it is that you have to do to go to the games. Why do you think you have a better chance now that you have to be the fittest 35-year-old in Canada? Because I think there's a lot of fit dudes in America, in the United States. But how did that detract from you? What was... what? Okay, wait. What? How did you have to do it last year? Top 20 in the world. That was it. Top 20 in the world. Yeah, and it was like oh. all American dudes. Oh. Like Josh Bridges is no longer a threat to me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I see. I see. Yeah. So where did you come in 35 years? Well, you're not 35 yet. Did you look where you would have been? In the world, I think I would have gone into the qualifier at right. like... 40 something. Okay. How many went to the qualifier? Top 200 worldwide? Yeah. Right. Um, and so now, but what, isn't there, isn't there not going to be an online qualifier for Masters and Teams this year? I don't know, man. I have no clue. I think I heard something about that. Yeah, I don't know. We need an engineer to fact check this stuff sometime. We should get Kaylee up here. Well, nothing's like, nothing's set in stone, right? I know. They still haven't really made any official announcements yet. Yeah, so... I, 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 my recommendation to people is just like kick back, keep keep getting as fit as you can. Kick possibly back and get. relax. That could be misconstrued. What do you mean by kick back? Okay, you mean just chill? Yeah, like like stop worrying about. Don't it. worry about what's going to come of the competition season. Just keep working on do your. Do you fitness think any because app- the fact that the fittest people will go to the games will not change? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I mean, like 
I think a lot of people thought that like a lot of people were just gonna pack it in and go home, but like I don't I'm sure think a lot of happen. people will. Oh, a I lot think of fringe athletes. I think so, but I mean, like even like some of the top level ones in America who are like, oh, I'm not gonna come top twenty or win this or win that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. It's definitely not incentive for them to go hard in the paint. Yeah, It'll be interesting unless it is. It's more of an incentive. You got to remember, like. You're talking to a 33-year-old who's been in this sport for, like, almost 10 years. Mm-hmm. It's very easy for me to put my – the way I think. Like, Do you remember I the hi- – assume everyone thinks that way. Do you remember seeing all – because there's been a lot of changes in the last 10 years. Yeah, I remember everything. We went from sectionals to regionals. I Sectionals, so I came in just after sectionals. I think okay. when I started this sport, it was the very first CrossFit Games Open. Well, because – so when it, first, when it first started, you just registered and showed up at a yeah. Royal Miss. Yeah. That was it for three years. Then in 2010, there was 2010 or 2009, there were sectionals. I think 2010 and 11, there were sectionals. Okay. No, sorry, 2009 and 10. 2009 11, and 10. there was the Open. The Open, yeah. Um, and so after sectionals, sectionals you signed up for went. If you won that, you went to regionals. If you won that, you went to the games kind of thing. Or like top whatever, top five kind of thing. That was Those are the steps, sectionals, yeah, maybe, regionals, yeah, games. Sure. And then 2011, Open, regionals, games. And then when did the Super Regionals come in? 2015. Did people freak out and were they as butthurt by super regionals do you think as all this new news do you remember uh, i wasn't really around i was around crossfit but like in a hole in the middle of nowhere Nova well the way the way the changes happened before it was it was always just kind of like uh if you didn't like the changes you were you were you lacked confidence in your fitness right right so like in 2015 when they introduced the super regional like i was I think I was coming off a 28th place open finish, and it was just like, okay, pal, like, you got to get your shit together if you want to go to regionals. Right. You know? Right. And then... You came 28th in Canada East? Yeah. 2011, I came 118th. 2012... In the region? Yeah. Hmm. 2012, I came 64th when they took 60. Uh, 2013... Oh, that sucks. (laughs) Did you... You went to go... You probably got to go, though, because you probably got backfilled, no? Uh no, I went as oh, we went on a team that year and we won. Oh, right, right, right. Um, the games. Yeah, 2013. <laughs> no, we won regionals. <laughs> yeah, <on the game. laughs> you said yeah right after. 2013, we I forget where I placed, but I qualified as an individual. 14, I qualified as an individual. Mm-hmm. 15 was the first super region. That was my best open finish ever, and it was like 10th place, I think. In Canada East. Yeah. And that was what year? 2015, the first Super Regional. Wow. Where did the rest of the guys finish? PT was for sure ahead of me. Uh, he might have been fourth or fifth. Right. Pete was right behind me. I think he was 11th. That's cool. Yeah. Pete never beat me when I was, like, before surgery. Is that what you, like, surgery stopped you? Well, I had to take, like, a lot of time off. But I just mean, like, before that, you were, like, going, 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 and then you hit a wall with the surgery, or were you on a bit of a decline before? Like, I'm just, I'm just asking, like, not as a jerk, no, but, I like, know what objectively. You mean, like, well, you, were you at your peak rate before the surgery? Yeah. Yeah, like, I, I hurt myself at regionals, oh. and I had to pull out. What year, 2016? Yeah. Hmm. And then I needed surgery that November. I couldn't do the... I did the open... Like, but like as an affiliate yeah, order to I show came your like members, five hundredth in the yeah. region, well, and then still then not bad. That's pretty much what I came this year. Then last year, I came fiftieth, and I wasn't a hundred percent. You're on the first page, though. Yeah, I was, <laughs> and that was my goal, and I got just that. <laughs> yeah, but this year, I think I could do better. Like, I think I could come like top thirty, maybe in the region. Interesting. I feel, I feel better. I feel fitter. Yeah, my hip doesn't really. It comes, it comes and goes. I think what people forget too with all these changes is that like that stuff's still going to be cool. Like for for those of us who might just have a number goal in the open, like you know, like I think it'd be. I'm not a competitive athlete in CrossFit, but I think it'd be really cool to be somewhere near the top 100 at some point. Um, and you know, for you, it might be top 30. Like that stuff's not changing at all. No, that's not changing. I do think it's cool I to have to have someone at your affiliate that represents a little bit more, though. You know what I mean? Like. Like, I think it would be really cool for NCR to send someone to the games on any Absolutely. capacity, right? Like, I think that's just cool for the affiliate. So, like, yeah. you're ma- like these new changes are going to make it significantly harder to allow that to happen. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's going to be harder to send people to the games. I like, think that's a fact. I think, but, okay, so here's the thing. I don't 
I don't know if I agree with that because I think you have athletes who can now pick and choose how their path to the games. There was one path to the games before. Everyone had to do the same thing. Everyone had to do the same five workouts in the open and the same six workouts in regionals. You had to. You didn't have a choice. Now you have a choice. Now, if you're an open warrior, you can legitimately just train Metcons all damn year and just train and train and train and train and train your eight-minute Metcon. But what makes you think that the open's going to remain the same test of fitness? Because it, by and large, has. Are you saying that the Open has not evolved over the last five years? Of course it has, but at the same time, I mean, we, re- we repeat workouts. We repeated a workout from 2011 this year, the first year. So, like, by and large, there's still a lot of similarities, and people know how to train for the Open in general. There's 15 to 20 movements you have to be really good at, and everyone knows what they are. Yes, sure, there's a new movement every year, but all I'm saying is there's consistently athletes since 2011 who do really, really well in the Open and can do so. Yeah, I mean... And so now they don't have to worry about shooting the better regionals. They can legitimately just train for the open. So I think I, I'm not saying it'll be easier for everyone, but I'm saying for some athletes it might be easier because there are some athletes who, vice versa, sucked in the open but could go to these Wadapaloozas and Granite Games and do decently because they're much better at longer, heavier, higher skill but that, workouts. That's irrelevant. Why is it irrelevant though? You don't have to do good in the open to go to these you, qualifiers. No, but you have you yeah, you do you have to you have to do a qualifier to qualify for these Sh- events. Yeah, absolutely. And you have to win the event to go but, to the games. Yes, but doing that qualifier to get to that sanctioned event is going to be a lot easier than coming t- top 20 at the uh, in the open worldwide. What makes you say that? Have because, you ever done one of those qualifiers? Because there's 16 of them and out of those 16, 40 so, people are going to go, so you have to come top 40 out of s- time 16. But what so you if it's have the same 40 people every time? Okay, but it's still... Because if you come second, right, you didn't qualify for shit. Right, absolutely. You but you can come 39th and go. You can't come 39th in the open and go. So here, just uh, like as, uh, as a competitor who's been to both regionals and who has qualified for one of those... So I, I've qualified for regionals in the same year, dude. Mm-hmm. I didn't qualify for the, the Wadapalooza Pro Division. Mm-hmm. I, I, I barely qualified for the RX yeah. division, which is one down from pro. So it's yeah. like, was it easier for me to qualify for regionals in my region mm-hmm. versus Wadapalooza? It was much easier. Okay. So that means then that you're a better open athlete, potentially. No, because they you have to do something similar to the open to qualify for that event. Okay, so then if it's similar, why did you have such a harder time qualifying for WADA than you did WAZA than you did for the open? Because the population size was larger. More people did WAZA than did the open? No, but when I do the open I'm competing against I keep people. saying it wrong, WAZA. WIZA. <laughs> WIZA. Uh when I do the open I compete against Canada East. Yes. That's my population. Sure. When I qualify for that, I'm competing against the whole world. And that's what will that will be. That's not limited to a specific region. That's fucking fair game for the entire world, right? Sure. Absolutely. Again, what I all I'm saying though is that you can kind of pick and choose to some extent what you're better at. Like if you ha if you are a true open warrior, if you know the open is just your jam, you can train really, really hard for the open and you don't have to worry about being still okay for regionals like you can legitimately just train for the open do the open in october and then you have until august to focus on the games do you know what i mean yeah but that i mean yeah but going back to my original statement Mm -hmm. which was it's going to be harder to qualify for the games that doesn't what you just said doesn't address that issue i think although i see what you're saying but i don't think that can be a blanket statement i don't think you can just say it's gonna be harder to qualify for the games because the stats now are that it's going to be infinitely easier because there's going to be 166 athletes in each division qualifying for the games versus 40 number one number two i all i'm saying is that not for every athlete will it be easier but i'm just saying there's specific athletes who like i said well yeah will if do, you're a top five games athlete it's going to be <coughs> no but like there's specific athletes who do really really well in the open and really really bad at regionals that yep. happens time and time again and the reason why they don't go to the games is because they suck at regionals now those athletes, because let's say like yeah, like win- Jean Roi Simel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So someone who can win their region but can never go to the games because they suck at regionals, they now don't have to worry about regionals. So it's going to be easier for them because they just have to. If you're winning your region, you're pretty close to top twenty in the world for the most part, right? Yeah, that, that's fair statement. That, you're, for sure, it's a fair statement. But you're talking about like point zero 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 one of people exactly and how many people what what percentage of people go to the games point zero 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 one so it's the same percentage i'm just saying 
certain individuals now will have it a little bit easier to do so. Yeah, but I think like overall, <coughs> to get to the CrossFit Games, I hate talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I hate talking about it because we don't know enough about it to sh- like draw sure. conclusions. Sure, sure. Absolutely. But from what we do know, I don't I don't agree. I don't think it's going to be harder. I'm just thinking about Pete and PT. Okay. Like Go I, into I'm that. Thinking about our, like, I, I don't know. It's hard to say. Like th- Those guys killed it this year at regionals. Mm-hmm. Like, they were not far from qualifying to the CrossFit Games. Yeah. PT was five spots away. Yeah. Pete was, what, six spots away? Yeah. Very close. Like I think this new whatever mm-hmm. is going to make it much more challenging for them. Mm-hmm. Do you think, though, like... Are either of those athletes better in the open than they are at regionals, would you say? I, you know them better than I do. I think I would say it's pretty – PT's pretty, like, equal. Okay. If we were to take his, like, CrossFit career on average, yeah. like, he does pretty well at regionals. Like, it's not yeah. – like, he usually – I think he averages – if you look at his average, it's probably within the top 10. Mm-hmm. Um, Pete's a shitty open athlete. Okay. But he's a great regional like – a, like, a crazy good regionals athlete. So <laughs> – PT is not the greatest example, but uh, this year was a bad example because Pete did really well in the open. PT did, didn't do so well. Exactly, but let's let's pretend that didn't happen. From what you just said, we won't use PT because people who are even keel, I think your point's right. If someone's just like relatively good at the open and relatively good at regionals, but not amazing at either, they're gonna have a harder time making these games. But I think an athlete like Pete, who you just said isn't as good at the open, but is really good at regionals. I think he might have an easier time because if he's really good at regionals, then he might have the shot. He will have the shot right. to win a qualifier. I, like when we're saying really good at regionals. You mean comparative to the open? Yes. But okay, but let's let's say that. To me, really good at regionals is like top five. Like absolutely. You, quali- you qualified at the game. Yeah. yeah, yeah really yeah. good. Yeah. Anything less than that is decent. Sure. But let's just, let's for argument's sake, then we won't even use Pete. We'll just use an athlete who's really good at regionals and not good in the open. That athlete now doesn't have to worry about the open as much because I guarantee you they will have, if they were qualifying for regionals, they will be able to qualify for one of these sanctioned events. I don't know, man. I think so. That like, yeah, I don't. I disagree. Because I think, I just just again from yeah, personal yeah. experience, mm-hmm. done that qualifier mm-hmm. Waterpalooza, mm-hmm. and I've also qualified for regionals in the same year. Mm-hmm. Way friggin' harder, man. Mm-hmm. Way friggin' harder. Mm-hmm. Do you think now that maybe? Listen, I hope, I hope, I hope, for the sake, uh, like I hope you're right. I really do. Well, I mean, and you also know that my entire job here is just to get you fired up. So I don't. <laughs> what I'm saying is, you can take with a grain of salt. Yeah, and like I don't I'm, necessarily uh, mean man, everything like, I'm saying. Just, I'm we just, could talk about this forever because like there's no right or wrong answer because we, mm-hmm. we don't know anything. We don't yeah. have enough facts gathered about the situation. Mm-hmm. But what do pe- what should people do? Listen, here, here here's. I started I started competing in 2011 at which point they took 60 uh oh at which point they took 60 athletes to regionals the following year they took 60 the following year they took 48 okay then they took I think they took 48 for two years then it was down to 20 and then it was down to 20 again and now it was this year is down to 15 like it has become harder and harder and harder to qualify for the games. Mm-hmm. They're taking that 1% and they're they're just squeezing it. Mm-hmm. And that's what they just did again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is good for the sport. It's cool. It's just like, I don't know, whatever. I don't know enough. Yeah. But it's, yeah. I'm just saying like what I just said, mm-hmm. is f- I think it follows that trend of like mm-hmm. decreasing that population size. Yeah, exactly. And I, I totally agree in the sense that like I think a lot of the fringe athletes are screwed. Like I think a lot of the athletes who just who like, can't win regionals or can't win the open are in trouble. But I think the athletes who have who are good at one and not good at the other and are extremely good at one yeah. will now have an easier time. It's also just like PT and I were talking about this earlier. It's just like it's just a completely different process, mm-hmm. right? It's completely different. Like, that's all. Mm-hmm. It, it's, you know, like if if I if, agree some, with if that. some kid I agree starts with crossfitting tomorrow, some twenty year old, and he's really good, mm-hmm. and it's like, hey, what do I gotta do to get the games? This is what you have to do. It's not gonna be any like he's gonna be like, okay, cool. Kind of like when we started the sport. Mm-hmm. Want to go to the games? This is what you gotta do. Okay, cool. Like I don't give a shit what I have to do. Yeah. Just tell me what I gotta do so I could try to get there. Yeah. It's just 
weird for us because we've been around it for so long. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like, now it's different. Well, I think, and again, I just think it's like a complete shift. Like the sport is just changing. It is now a league more so than it is an event. Like the CrossFit Games was an event like the Olympics was. Well, the Olympics is a bad example because they have world qualifiers. But the Olympics was, or the Games was an event as in it happened once a year. There's very few things that happened before it. Whereas now there's so many things that happened before it. I would compare it much more closely to the, because it's going to be an annual thing, close, much more closely to the playoffs in any sport. And then the qualifiers are going to be the regular season. Yeah, cool. It's just different, you know. I don't. I don't like to compare it to other things. Mm-hmm. Why not? It's because it's unique and it's, it's it's its own thing. How? Actually, if I had to compare it to one thing, I think it's unique just because it hasn't developed enough to be compared. It's, it's a very similar. Uh, it's very similar to like um, action sports, like snowboarding sports. and skateboarding and BMXing oh. and like. Are you talking about like esports? Like you get the uh, the gravity games and the X games and the mm-hmm. whatever games, the Red Bull, this that. You want to talk about sports? That's crazy. Sure. Esports is gonna be bigger than baseball in the next year in America. Isn't what that is crazy? Esports. What's esports? Like video games. Like PUBG. Yeah, well, not quite PUBG, but like League of Legends. They had the League of Legends World Championships this weekend, and I think I think I might be wrong, but I'm ninety nine percent sure it had more viewers than the last like two World Series combined in baseball. That's nuts. Isn't that insane? It's kind of scary. Prize pool is bigger. The I saw this on I was I think it was on bar schools, or maybe it was on House of Highlights that each athlete on the top team for esports right now is like a 60 60 six hundred and fifty thousand dollar a year salary not including sponsorships wow playing video games isn't that crazy it's kind of sad why i don't know because it kind of did you listen it kind of foreshadows the way our society's heading oh i'm reading 1984 right now did you listen to that joe rogan elon musk podcast i'm halfway through it dude it is the most amazing thing ever i know it's cool smokes a j at the end it's really cool i just love how Elon Musk, like... I absolutely love that guy. He pauses before he answers a question, and his answer is, like, the most basic thing. Yeah. I just think it's so cool how he's just, like, a serial entrepreneur and how, like, he wanted to he's make a, a hat, so he magnet. made a hat, and... He's yeah. a business magnet. Absolutely. Not an entrepreneur. Well, in the sense of, like, he know, has an idea know, and he just, executes on it immediately. He, he refers to himself as, as that. Gotcha. Um, how did I bring that up? Why did I bring that up? Because of the League of Legends. He oh, yeah, because you said that's bad. Why is that bad? Why? Well, I'm I'm reading 1984. Have you ever heard of that book? No. Okay. Anyway, it's uh. Is it like a nostalgic book of your childhood? No, it's. Is that the year you were born? No, it is the year I was born, which is just a coincidence. But, oh, okay. Um, I don't know. It just talks about how like government's gonna take over and like Big Brother's watching. No, it's the exact opposite, dude. It's the exact opposite. Listen, it's power man, of the people, dude. Do you know what I don't blockchain want my is? Kid growing up playing League of Legends. Have you heard of blockchain? Have you heard of cryptocurrency? Like decentralization is happening. Yeah, like, and I don't. The like government's it. getting less control, not more. Okay, well, whatever. Like robots. Hey, Think about you so- heard the Elon Musk podcast, right? Artificial intelligence. Yeah, but dude, you just started threat. talking. You started talking about the government, dude. No, the I, government. Ha- I like, think about social media I, now. I, was, I know. I was using that as a ref- like I was referring to it as how they're like taking over. Who? In the book. In the book, the government is like watching everything. Like everything you do is being watched and criticized. When was this book written? When? Yeah. Before 1984, like a long oh. time ago, which is <laughs> okay. which is crazy because there's a lot of similarities to the stuff that we do today. But uh, anyway, what I'm trying to say is like artificial intelligence, man. Yeah. It's coming. It is coming. It's a threat. But why? Why does it have to I be? I don't know enough about it. Yeah. I don't want to comment on it, but it's just... You know, stupid things like you, we'll be talking about like buying a new pair of Reeboks and then we go on Facebook on our phones and like there's an ad for Reeboks. Mm-hmm. Like that shit's real, man. And like Yeah, but doesn't that make your life more convenient because then you can see where the sales are and you can save a few bucks instantly on Reeboks? Yeah, but I don't want it to get to the point where like it's dangerous. What's that point look like? I don't know. Like when I'm talking to someone about something. I, I don't know. Like It's just freaky. I don't like that shit. Maybe it'll make us better people because you can't say things that you wouldn't say you in front of the world. You want to be a better person. Just be a kinder person. You don't need freaking computers and gadgets and legal But what I'm saying is like maybe... So like what about if you look at like all the stuff that's coming out recently with like people being held accountable for their actions from years past because of things like social media, like the Me Too movement. I don't want to get too deep with this. I don't though. know what that is. You don't know what the Me Too movement is? No. It's like the Harvey all Weinstein stuff. Matter. Harvey, do you know what Harvey? No, Dude, no. Listen, I'll be like, I don't watch the news. I like, don't. That's not the. the I don't watch news the news either. I'm, I'm just. I, I own. No, I'm I like own the completely internet. ignorant can, to that stuff. 
Really? Like mo- for the most part. Okay, like, so I I don't want to get dark with it, so I'm not going to go to that specific example. But like, people are able to expose people much easier now, and so it's forcing people to be better humans. Like even the uh, Donald Trump thing, you yeah, can't you should, say stuff you like be that. A better human in fear of getting exposed. You should just be a better human just for the sake of being a better human. Sure, that's what I as an ideal point of view. But I think also now you might out. Yeah, the but then it's who not genuine. Do that. It's fake. Right. Which is like. So if someone if someone gives a dollar to a homeless person because they feel they like they should versus they want to, they're still giving a dollar to a homeless person. Do it out of the goodness of your heart, not out of the, the feel, like the need to, like, I don't know. Like, do you think artificial... That's not a good person. Do you think artificial intelligence will ever be in our world? It already is. No, 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 no. In our world, like in the gym. Like taking over as coaches and stuff. Well, I mean, we when people walk into our gym now, they don't walk in and say, "Hey, I'm here for class." They walk in and they type their name into an iPad. Yeah, there you go. It's That's kind of cool. That helps us, though, don't you think? We can go on. We can see who's signed in for class. Yeah. It's easier than it was in two thousand one. Nothing about our operations would change if we did not do that. Really? It's just more convenient. So what if someone walked in and then... We write their name on the whiteboard every day. Yeah, I know. It helps. Maybe that way we know that their membership is active because they're able to sign in. Yeah. They don't owe us a bunch of money. I mean, we could always just go to the computer and check after class. Right. Would you do that after every class for all 36 people that came to your 4 p.m.? If right I, before you have to coach the kids' class? Yeah, I'd take a picture of the whiteboard and cross-reference it to... <laughs> it sounds like a lot of work. Listen, Are you scared of technology in general? Do you not, do you not like it in general? I like technology. You're just you're like confusing me because of this whole 1984 thing, and then the whole like I don't want my kid growing up with it. I don't I don't, I don't subscribe want my to that. Kid sitting on a couch playing Le- League of Legends. Go ahead, Nate. What do you want you them play to PUBG. do? What do you want? Them to do? Everything in moderation. Like I play what a game or two a day of League of Legends. No, but if. If we're creating a world where you can make money from playing League of Legends and you're mm-hmm. making $650,000, it's mm-hmm. just seems like a shitty world to me. Do you think maybe people thought that about like sports when they first became professional? In the sense of like, oh, that's not proper. Like these men are like rolling around in mud and beating each other up and getting paid for it or fighting. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I think I think like historically speaking Sports gained a lot of steam from gambling, maybe. Like, there was an opportunity for... What, you mean when gambling was, like, prohi- pro- prohibited? Pro- I think gambling always was. Like, people always bet on sports, like, from long, like, long time ago. Right. Yeah. And, like, that's why, I don't know, sports... I, I don't know. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> this is, what is this podcast even about? <laughs> I think... It was so fun because we, before we started... We need some whiskey. You were like, what, what, what are we going to talk about? And I said, don't worry about it. I'll get you talking. This was, this has been fun, man. Uh, are we done? No, I'm not done yet. Are you done? <laughs> 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 All right, we can be done. Do you have any closing remarks? We've covered so many topics. There is so much knowledge that can be gained. From <laughs> Actually, we've been talking over asses for the entire thing. I don't think either of us are qualified enough to no, speak on all any of these speculation. Points. But it's going to create a lot of great micro content for me, which is amazing. Do you, okay. Do you know what micro content no, is? No, I don't. It's taking bigger macro content like this and turning it into little pieces of individual content. So, like, I can take a minute of this and put it on Instagram. That's micro content. Okay. That's good. Okay. Thanks for chatting with me, man. How do you like the new mics? We need stands. <laughs> we have stands. Here, you want to hear how you sound? But then your ear. It's the left one. Nope. Yeah, there you go. Now talking to the mic. Oh, yeah. Isn't that nice? Why don't we wear these? Well, because we don't have, like, good enough headphones for it to matter. So I put... This sounds pretty good. It does, yeah. I mean, we could... I guess you could just bring your own headphones. <laughs> you could bring your own headphones in if you really wanted. We could plug them in. There's only one jack, though. No, you can get a thing to make it more. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>